Hello friend, today we're going to talk about law and morality in the area of um, stem cells. In this video I'm going to discuss law and morality in the area of bioethics such as creating a child to help another child, um, different conception techniques, um, human-animal hybrids, and how far can the boundaries of stem cell research be pushed. I will attempt to cover um, other topics such as why and when do replicating cells no longer remain identical, what is genetic engineering otherwise known as the manipulation of stem cells to produce desired tissues, um, nuclear transfer otherwise known as cloning to replicate complete beings, um, what does tampering with an embryo or oh, pardon me, when does tampering with an embryo become murder? Is it acceptable to clone a baby to save a child's life? And um, um, if there is uh, sufficient time within this um, video production, we may discuss the issue of when does human life begin. The Human Fertilization and Embryology Act 1990, which created the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority, otherwise known as the HFEA, and in this uh, discussion we shall be referring to it as the HFEA. Uh, it is a statutory body in the United Kingdom that regulates and inspects all UK clinics, providing um, UK clinics providing in vitro fertilization, artificial insemination and the storage of human eggs, sperms or embryos. Um, it also regulates human embryo research. I will also attempt to examine the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act 2008. Uh, the starting point, or rather, um, to first answer the simplest question, which was um, posed earlier on, why and when do replicating cells no longer remain identical? Uh, the answer, the simple answer is nobody really knows why those um, the replicating uh, cells, initially they are, they are identical, but at some point they start becoming differentiated. Okay, that answered, let's go to the next question. What is genetic engineering? Um, otherwise known as manipulation of stem cells to produce desired tissues. I will attempt to break it down and make it as easy to understand as possible because um, uh, if I were to use all the technical ling lingo and technical language it can very easily become very confusing. So we're going to make it very simple. Okay, The starting point is the unfertilized egg and we're going to be talking about artificially coaching the egg and not the normal way where you would have a sperm and an egg create exactly the embryo. So in this particular uh, instance we're talking about uh, unfertilized egg, artificially coaching an unfertilized egg to start mitosis. That's the process of splitting up to start mitosis and become an embryo yielding stem cells. Um, this was first discovered in sea urchins, urchins as in U-R-C-H-I-N-S and this was uh, this type of um, uh, research was previously limited to mice uh, but by virtue of the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act 2008 it is now conducted in humans and in hybrid cells. Uh, if this method 
is effective, in other words, this method of artificially coaching on fertilized egg is is effective, uh, then stem cells can be harvested and can be used for research while avoiding the moral and ethical debates that has to do with um, female egg and the male sperms. Um, stem cell research uh, is an attempt to ultimately cure deadly diseases. In 2009, the leading cause of death uh, in the UK for over 35 year old was either coronary heart disease or cancer. Stem cell research is, an, uh, is a method or uh, is scientists trying to, prov to provide um, and sincerely trying to provide cure for uh, diseases such as AIDS, mental illness, autoimmune diseases, obesity, or, pardon me, obesity, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, Lou Gehrig disease, heart disease, cancer, muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, systemic lupus, erythematosus, uh, just to mention a few. Um, and there are other uh, illnesses which um, uh, scientists are attempting to cure through this method. Now, you may ask the question, what has all of this got to do with children? Well, I'm coming to it. Well, in America, a six-year-old American child had a rare bone marrow disease, anemia, bleeding disorders, severe immune disorder problems, and was likely to die within one year. The doctor told um, the parents of the child that there is a 90% chance of curing it through a cell transplant technique from the umbilical cord of a matched sibling, requiring the use of a screened, screened embryo, as in S-C-R-E-E-N-E-D, screened embryo. Um, the name the name of the child, uh, Molly Nash, that's M-O for those who want to do further research, M-O-L-L-Y, Nash as in N-A-S-H, was born with Falcone anemia, destined for leukemia. The only effective treatment was to get a batch of healthy cell from a perfectly matched sibling to replace the child's faulty bone marrow cells. Since each parent carries both a normal and a faulty version of the Fanconi gene, each pregnancy had a 25% chance of an affected child. Embryos were created by standard by standard in vitro um, by standard in vitro fertilization in a lab laboratory uh, dish and tested for the presence of a disease gene. Only those tested normal are then transferred to the woman's uterus. Only two of the 15 tested normal, only one out of the 15 tested, only one was healthy enough for transfer to Lisa Nash's womb. The Colorado couple used genetic techniques to create a test tube baby that would have the exact of the cells desperately needed to save their six-year-old daughter. Now, she now has a 90% chance of being free of the uh, bone marrow disease. Genetic uh, screening and stem cell research uh, is here and as in this particular instance it did provide a solution to a very deadly diseases and furthermore um, it raises complex and ethical dilemmas which I will deal with later on. Just by way of um, understanding how uh, the cells um, div um, split up or um, create themselves there is a medical term called cytokinesis. 
spelled C Y T O K I N E S I S. Cytokinesis results in identical cells, which later develop into over 200 different cells and tissues. As I mentioned earlier, you've got one cell that splits up into two, splits up into four, and then keeps splitting up and it develops into 200 different cells and tissues. Okay. The question is, why do they differentiate? I've answered that question earlier on, and before they become differentiated, they are called stem cells. A stem cell develops into the code of four, which contains 20 amino acids and over 100,000 proteins to make, this, to make the cell operate. But then, for some reason, they start differentiating to make over 200 cells, making up the tissues and the organs. Um, my own paraphrase, I'm going to paraphrase a uh, medical uh, term so that you can understand it. Cloning or nucleus transfer is by taking the stem cells before they become differentiated and you put it in a donor and have the nucleus generate a replica of the donor. This is quite common these days in animals. Now, to take a, a nucleus from another entity stem cells, i.e. from an animal, and transfer it into a human cell is to create what we call a hybrid, a hybrid cell embryo, otherwise known as cyto and you know all this uh, not usual uh, language for my profession but um, I will try to pronounce it um, otherwise known as cytoplastic embryos in 2004 the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority HFEA granted British scientists a license to produce cloned human cells make it it only the second country in the world to permit such a procedure in 2005 the HFEA granted a license to treat mitochondrial diseases by allowing researchers to attempt to create an embryo with two genetic mothers in 2006, the HFEA approved in principle the screening of embryos for genes that may lead to certain cancers in middle age. In 2007, the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority agreed to allow women to be able to donate their eggs to research projects, providing that they are strong, there are strong safeguards in place to ensure the woman the women are properly informed of the risk of the procedure and are properly protected from cohesion now I will attempt to deal with the moral dilemmas and the risks of uh, the procedures and the uh, methods I've mentioned above the law and morality concerns otherwise known as um, ethical concerns stems from the lack of sufficient safeguard uh, against errors and abuse. There are thousands of companies across the world who are experimenting, the, experimenting in this area in a race for new discoveries, exclusive rights and patents. There is the real risk that while experimenting with species unknown diseases could start to emerge. The potential for self-replicating mutations and other hazards are difficult to predict or anticipate. There are few regulatory procedural safeguards. There are few regulatory or procedural safeguards. There are small intensive competitive labs across the globe. In some part of the world, there is a race to create the first cloned child. 
If such a being is created, I ask the question, is it a child? Whose child? And is a child subject to Children Act? We don't know. We don't yet, uh, we don't yet have answers to these questions. And there are other areas which I'd like to discuss, but um, for uh, brevity and um, to be able to make other videos more informative, I will defer those um, questions and other matters which I have not explored to my uh, next video. Uh, please let me know what your views are regarding uh, this area of uh, bioethics and um, your views about uh, my uh, discussion. I hope you have um, enjoyed it and I hope you found it informative.